It's glorious it's out. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't gorgeous. resist coming out to walk it's like the a, waterfront. It's like a dream. And enjoying the weather. In fact, I think I'm overdressed now. <laughs> How long is this going to last? When will we have a day like well, this again? Yeah. You never know, so we have to enjoy it while we can. Smiles all around today marks the warmest day of the year so far. So many people were out and about enjoying that weather in the at the Vancouver waterfront. They welcomed in the sun after what feels like a longer than normal winter. Welcome to KGW News. I'm Evan Watson. Meteorologist Joe Ranieri is with me now. Joe, please tell me <laughs> we'll have more sunny days like this lined up. Here's the thing. I think a lot of people who are going out and have some, you know, evening plans, evening dinner, are going to be asking for the patio table. Great night to do that. Sure. Come tomorrow, it won't be so nice. Now, we've seen a three day stretch of sunny and warm conditions. Like Evan said, this is the warmest day we've seen so far this year. Highs flirting with 70 degrees throughout much of the metro area. Portland, Vancouver, you topped out at 68 degrees, about 10 degrees warmer from where we should be for this time of year in Kelso 67 degrees. The last time we saw a temperature of 68, you have to go back five months. It was October 4th of last fall where we saw temperatures that warm. The last 70 degree day was October 20th of last year. So we didn't quite get 70 and it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing a chance for 70 over the next couple of days because changes are going to be moving on shore heading into late tomorrow or I should say late tonight and into parts of tomorrow morning along the coast. But I think for the most part, the value you stay dry until at least late morning tomorrow. Right now we're seeing a temperature of 67 degrees. Some high clouds out there throughout the city right now. But as we look at the weather headlines, warmest day of the year today. Again, that should look at 68 degrees. Last time we saw highs this warm again, you have to go back to last October. Rain and cooler weather returns heading into tomorrow. Rainfall amounts at this point, Evan, could be anywhere from a tenth, which would be on the lighter side, to up to a quarter of an inch of rain. I'll break it all down for you coming up in a few minutes. Thank you, Joe. It was a chaotic night in downtown Portland and law enforcement is continuing to investigate two shootings. The first happened just before 2 a.m. Patrol officers heard gunshots, then responded to West Burnside near 4th Avenue, not far from Dante's nightclub. One man, one man there had been shot and had critical injuries. He was taken to the hospital. While that investigation was going on, officers heard more gunshots a few blocks away. It looks like the second shooting happened behind Dante's, but so far there's no sign of any victims from that gunfire. No arrests have been made related to these shootings. A man experiencing a mental health crisis was hit at a slow speed by a Portland police vehicle along I-84 last night at about 730. Authorities say the man moved in front of the vehicle despite the officer slowing down and trying to swerve. The man suffered minor injuries. While investigating, authorities questioned the officer, witnesses, and the man who was hit. That man told authorities he was jumping in front of vehicles in an attempt to commit suicide. He was taken to the hospital for mental health treatment. No arrests or citations have been issued. If you're experiencing, experiencing a mental health crisis or know someone else who is, you can call or text the number on your screen, 988. The Suicide and Crisis Lifeline is confidential. Now to Portland's homeless crisis and housing issue. Residents of Northeast Portland's Montevilla neighborhood gathered this afternoon for a town hall meeting about proposed sanctioned camping sites. And Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler was there to answer questions. Devin Haskins was at that town hall this afternoon and joins us now from the newsroom with more of what happened and what was said. Devin, what can you tell us? Hey, uh, good, uh, good evening, Evan. The community meeting was moved from one location to another to add more space. And even in the new space, the church's sanctuary, well, it was quickly filled up with standing room only in the back. People showed up to hear Mayor Ted Wheeler answer questions about the homeless crisis in Portland and the city's plans to install six sanctioned tent sites, at least one of which was a site being considered near that place, near 90th and Stark, that the site's owners now say the city is no longer being cons is considering. Two other sites, though, along 82nd Avenue are owned by Multnomah County. They are turning those into safe park sites. County announced earlier this week that this site at 333 Southeast 82nd will be what's called a safe park site. It will provide people that live in their cars a place to park and access services that will help them find housing. Now back to that meeting. There weren't any fireworks, no loud voices as the mayor sat on stage and answered questions written by audience members and that were read to him and asked to him by a moderator. He talked about what those sanctioned sites would look like, the city's plans for them, and how his relationship with the county and state are now better after new leadership has been elected into office. He also addressed a question which got the crowd clapping in approval. 
Why are all the safe camp proposals always set to be located in lower income or, most, or more socioeconomically challenged areas? That is, that is absolutely a fair criticism. And I can tell you point blank, there is a location that we are looking at that would be considered the opposite of what you just described. The meeting was organized by Angela Todd. She's a community reporter that runs a site she calls PDX Real. She says the community wants a seat at the table and to be heard when the city considers where they put these sites. So what's happening in our community is that the city and county are actively trying to resolve the issues that we're having in Portland. And the more that they work on it, the worse it seems to be getting. So our perspective is that it would be good as a community for us to be involved in what these decisions are and for us to all come together and figure out how we can make decisions that are good for everyone who lives here. Now, earlier this month, you may remember the city announced the first of those mass encampments would be at Southeast Powell and 13th. The site will initially have space for 100 tents with up to 150 people. The site will be run by a California nonprofit that specializes in these types of sanctioned campsites. Evan. Thanks, Evan. Oregon lawmakers are considering a bill that would increase pen penalties for people in possession of fentanyl and for those dealing the dangerous drug. District attorneys across the state say it would close a loophole and make mandatory treatment a top option for those addicted. Tim Gordon has more on House Bill 2645. There is plenty of debate about Oregon's voter-approved Measure 110, which decriminalized low-level drug possession, even for hard drugs. But in the midst of a fentanyl epidemic, lawmakers are considering closing a gap that allows for possession of up to five grams of fentanyl before it's even a misdemeanor. I think it's an absolute crisis. Um, it is everywhere within your community. Dan Primus is the top prosecutor in rural Umatilla County and president of the Oregon District Attorneys Association, which supports House Bill 2645, aimed at breaking the grip of fentanyl. In Umatilla County, with a population of 80,000, Primus says law enforcement seized a record 72,000 pills containing fentanyl last year and are on track to break that record in 2023, having already seized 54,000 pills. It's something that we're seeing a steady increase of, and obviously we're seeing the consequence of it with the loss of life throughout the state. We want to save lives, period. And this is a step towards how do we help do that. At a committee hearing this week in Salem, lawmakers talked about the bill, which would make possession of from one to five grams of fentanyl a misdemeanor and anything more a felony. It also makes mandatory treatment a provision for offenders charged with possession. And that's really kind of the hope as well is to see what we can do about uh, assisting individuals with treatment and going through the treatment process because we know that that is a that is a gap. There's a gap there as well. House Bill 2645 also sets penalty levels for pills containing fentanyl because that is the form it comes in most of the time. For those dealing the deadly drug, that means there could be tougher penalties, treating fentanyl dealers the same as heroin dealers in court. You want to prevent those that are that are that are supplying, and 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 quite frankly, killing those within your community with this addiction issue. And that's this bill allows for that as well. Tim Gordon, KGW News.